Hey, it's Alex with Lover Fighter Writer, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to write SEO content using Closers Copy. So, Closers Copy is a really cool AI copywriting software. Um, I think it's the best one that has a lifetime deal available. There, uh, there are definitely some other really powerful AI copywriting softwares out there that don't have lifetime deals, and there's a lot that do have lifetime deals. But Closers Copy is the only one that I'm aware of that has a unlimited lifetime deal first of all so you can buy it once and you can use it as much as you want and second of all it is by far the most versatile and powerful one that has a lifetime deal it has way more tools and options built into it than most AI copywriting software does and today I'm going to show you the compete option which is right up here and that is for optimizing your website for searches uh, for search engine optimization so the first thing I'm going to point out is that uh, I'm writing I'm working on a blog post here I'm writing a blog post called how to make money on Upwork 10 times your freelancer income and I've just got it in a document called make money Upwork and so the first thing I'm going to point out is that closers copy actually has three different AI writing assistants built into it and the default one is called sales AI but since I'm working on a blog post, I'm gonna click down here, and then when this pops up, I'm gonna click on blog AI, because that's the AI that's trained to write articles and blogs and press releases. So now I've changed the blog AI down here. If you'd like to try Closer's Copy out, there is not a free trial. However, there is a money back guarantee, so you can buy it and be 100% uh, confident in the fact that if you don't like it, you can get your money back. Um, the creator, Nico Angler, is a really great guy, and he doesn't want anyone who doesn't like the software using it. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't want to hold on to your money if you want it back. He'll definitely want to refund you if you don't like the software. But I can pretty much tell you right now that if you're looking for a really useful tool for copywriting or for blog writing, uh, Closer's Copy is going to be something that you're going to want to hang on to once you get it. Anyways, let's get started. So I've got my blog right here, and I'm gonna click on Compete in the top left corner here. And so this opens up the Compete sidebar. And the first thing we need to do is put in a query. You can also put in a URL, but today I'm just gonna focus on how to use a uh, query in this. So the keyword or query that we're gonna work with is how to make money on Upwork. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna paste it in here. And then we can select the number of results that we want to bring in, either 10 or 20. I'm just going to leave it on 10. And then it's important to select the country. So I just need to click on this drop down and I'm going to start typing United States. And now United States comes up. I'll click on that. And then we select the English or the language that we want, which is English in this case. Um, so once we've got this set up, we just click on search. And this is going to take a little while because what Closer Copy needs to do now is scan Google. Um, scan the SERP, which is search engine results page, in order to get the top 10 ranking articles. And it's not just going to do that though, it's actually going to read those articles and pull the text right here into my sidebar so that I can read it in one easy place without needing to go to all the different websites and without uh, needing to look at their ads and their pop-ups and everything. I just get their text pulled right into my nice dark mode editor right here. And uh, to be honest, if that was all that Compete did, it would be worth it because it's really annoying to have to go to a whole bunch of different websites to read all their content and look at their pop-ups and look at their ads. Um, so this is just much easier uh, and much nicer. So anyways, now we've got all this data. I'll walk you through what it means. So for the top tabs, we have SERP, which again means search engine results page. We have optimize and we have history. History is just the history of uh, the queries that you've made. So you can see right here, I've got one query in this document, how to make money on Upwork. And then if I wanted to, if I had multiple ones in here, I could hit load and it would load the data from previous ones. Um, optimize, we'll look at that a bit later. And SERP is where we're gonna get started. So um, here in the overview on under averages, we have the average number of characters being used by people who are ranking for this term the average number of words being being used by people who are ranking for this term, the average number of paragraphs, and the average number of sentences. So as I mentioned before, um, people who are ranking for this term are writing over 2,000 words. So just from right, just from this one little piece of information right here, this one little data 
square, I can tell you that I need to write at least 2,000 words, probably more, in order to have a hope of ranking this article. And then right underneath this, we start to have uh, the specific results. So you can see nerdwallet.com is uh, ranking number one for this. And if I were to click on that, it would actually open the nerdwallet.com blog post. And then right here in these three dots, we have add outline and add content. If I were to click on add outline, it would add the entire outline of this article to my document. So uh, it would add all of the subheadings and headings, and I would just have their outline. If I click on add, out, add content, it adds the entire content to the article. And this is really useful because like I said, it can be really annoying to go to a bunch of different websites, look at their ads, look at their pop-ups, read through all their stuff. Sometimes the websites don't load well, sometimes they don't like load properly. So it can be really useful if you wanna read an article just to start a new document and closers copy. I do this all the time. Start a new document and closers copy. Come uh, do the search that you wanna do. Pull up, the doc pull, up the, pull up the page that you wanna pull up. Click on add outline. And all of a sudden you have their entire article right here in your nice dark mode editor or you know if you don't want the dark mode editor you can change it to light mode right here um, but in your nice editor where you can just read the text you don't need to worry about pop-ups and ads and stuff so that feature is really nice really cool but it's just the tip of the iceberg all right so that's what you can do right there add outline add content and then underneath of that we have their actual outline and this is everything on the page. So you can see it, it doesn't start with the H1, it actually starts with an H3 because they have this probably somewhere in their header. And then, then we have the H1, then we have H2s, H3s, H4s, it goes down in the order that they are on the page. Underneath that we have the next ranking article which is jakejorgovan.com. So I could go to that one with this, I could add their outline, I could add their content. Um, but the way that this works um, and a little bit finer when you start to fine tune it a little bit more and use the individual uh, the individual heading, this is where it gets really powerful. Because if I go here and click on these dots, I can add the headline, just the one headline, or I can add that entire section. So that would add um, that would add either the headline or the content beneath the headline. So you can see like what is Upwork. I'm asking the question what is Upwork and they're asking the question what is Upwork so I know that's a good question to be answering and then I can see here that I have 42 words answering this question whereas they have 126 words answering this question so maybe I want to increase the number of words I'm using there or if I was writing this from scratch and I wanted closers copy to answer this question for me here's what I could do super simple alright so I'm just gonna make some space here I'm gonna put three hashtags here and three hashtags here so we know where I am so let's say I was working on this article basically from scratch. I only had this part up here and I wanted to answer the question, what is Upwork? I could come in here, if you click this, I could say add headline, boom, it adds the headline right there. And then I could say, um, write for me. And as soon as I click write for me, it's gonna start thinking and then it's going to actually answer that question for me right in my document. So this is like, this is like having a framework for everything. Okay, so this is like um, any question or any subheading that any other article uses, you can just automatically turn into turn it into a framework and write a unique answer to it, a unique content for it in one click. So look at that. With one click, I just wrote all of this, and this is a 239 word answer to the question what is Upwork all right I'm not going to read that right now because I just want to I just wanted to show you how that works so now we we're back to this get rid of these anyway so that is that is really cool uh, you can you can hit right for me and it'll just load in the it actually loaded in the, uh, the heading as well so when you when you hit right for me it loads in the heading and it, it creates original content answering the heading all right, um, and so that's, uh, you can also read individual headings. So if I wanted to just, like I said earlier, uh, you know, you can, you can add sections into the document and you can add the entire content into the document. But if I just wanted to read what they've written, I just click on it 
and this opens right here down below and I can just read this one heading. So that's really handy as well. All right, so that is basically how the overview tab works in the SERP. And again, you can basically do this for for every everyone in the top 10 or everyone in the top 20, depending on what you do. You can look at all these early blog posts in a really granular way, really easily and really quickly, and get a lot of good information from them. But let's move on to the questions tab. So the questions tab works a lot like the overview tab, but it doesn't show all the headings. It only shows questions that are being asked in the text. And then um, if instead of having a write for me button, it has an answer button. So if I were to, again, we have what is Upwork again, um, I'll just put some space in there and I'll just say, what is Upwork? Answer the question. And now it's gonna think about it a little bit. And again, this is just like turning this exact question into a framework or into a template because it's not going to write anything that's irrelevant. It's only going to write relevant content um, that is about exactly what I want it to be about. And so you can see it loaded in, it loaded in the question, what is Upwork? And then it gave me an answer. Um, Upwork is a web-based marketplace that allows freelancers and companies, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just gonna delete that. Again, that's another way that you can easily write unique content answering a question that your con competitors are answering as well. And you can see I've got all these different questions for all these different articles that are ranking. Um, but let's get into the really, really powerful stuff. So that that is super useful. It's super cool. But um, this is where the real, the real power comes in when we look at stats and insights. So if we go to stats, oh, sorry, no, real power comes in in insights. Stats is very cool though as well. So stats is basically anywhere that the percentage symbol gets used in the article. Uh, closers copy is going to assume that's a statistic and it's going to pull it in here for you and statistics are really good things to add to your articles because it kind of adds authority it's like i could say if i say hey you know um lots of people are making money on upwork that that sounds you know somewhat convincing but if i say like um, you know, this, I'm just going to make up the statistic. I don't know if it's true, but if I say 60% of people who sign up for Upwork make $200 in their first month, that sounds a lot more compelling and a lot more convincing. than if I just say, oh yeah, lots of people make money on Upwork, right? So I don't know if that statistic is true. I just made that up, but you can see what I mean in that, uh, having a specific statistic is really a lot more compelling and convincing than just saying something generic. So that's how you can kind of pull stats out of your uh, competitors' articles. And then Insights is uh, the really cool one, I think, where you get, um, so you get the number of characters, the number of words, paragraphs, and sentences. And then if I click on keywords, it's actually going to go through their document and pull all of the keywords that they're using a lot and then show me right here um, my coverage versus their coverage. So you can see uh, one of the most commonly used words in both of our documents is work. I have it four times, which is a 32% coverage, um, or sorry, 0.32% coverage, which means that the word work is 0.32% of my document, whereas they have the word work 20 times. It's 2.25% of their document. So I might wanna use that word more often. Then if we look at Upwork, which is the next one, I've used it 28 times for 2.21% coverage, whereas they're only using it 14 times for 1.5%, 1.57% coverage. So I might want to use the word Upwork fewer times in my article, or at the very least, I probably don't want to use it any more times than I already have. All right, and you can do the same thing with keyword clusters. If I just click on clusters, it's going to change this, and it's going to show me keyword clusters rather than individual keywords, which can be really useful for getting a general idea for how you're doing. So here we have just a bunch of keyword clusters and you can click on them in order to add them directly in. So I just clicked on our partners and it added our partners into my document. All right, that is the SERP tab. Now we're gonna move on to the optimize tab, which is really the, the search engine optimization tab. Uh, I mean, this is very useful data for search engine optimization, but the actual keyword optimization part comes in right here in the optimize tab. So first we have structure and we have keywords. Structure is going to be things like how many characters, words, paragraphs, sentences, 
images and headings you're using, whereas keywords is your number of keywords you're using, the relevancy, and the optimization percentage. So if we look at structure, again, we can see my, um, my article is almost 1300 words, but the target is 2,644 words. So clearly I need to add more content. Um, then we have the number of paragraphs, the number of sentences, images. Um, that's all good information as well, because we want to, uh, basically we want to match or exceed our competition in basically all of these things. Um, and so if, for example, if I had the right number of words, but I had too few paragraphs, that would probably mean that my paragraphs on, on average are too long. All right. Um, so then we go to, uh, if we go to keywords over here, then we get the key individual keywords again, like we were looking at before and we get their relevancy, uh, my number of uses, the, the competitor number of uses or the, the target number of uses based on the average of the competitors and my optimization percentage, which is how much I'm using it compared to the target. So you can see here I'm using for clients, I'm using it more than the target number. So I've got 171%, but for work, I'm using half of the target number. So I've got 50%. All right, so that's how that works. And then if we go from opportunities to, uh, I'm just gonna go back to structure here. And then if we go from opportunities to sites, then uh, this is where we can actually select which sites we want to compare ourselves to. So if I, if I look through this list and I say, okay, this one is from Upwork.com, maybe it's not as relevant because it's, you know, of course Upwork is ranking for this because it's Upwork. Um, so maybe I don't want to compare to this one. I can just deselect that. And then now when I go back to opportunities, this data will have changed because it's no longer taking in to consideration that post from Upwork. Okay, so that is, uh, and then we have the history tab again, which is, uh, we already talked about that. It's just, um, it's just where you can see the history of the queries that you've made and you can quickly load them back in. So that is uh, the compete function in a nutshell. I think I've walked through everything important about it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If I've missed anything, uh, I'll be happy to make another video about this. I'm gonna be making a few more videos about closers copy in the coming uh, weeks. Uh, I've been off uh, a little bit ill, so I haven't been able to make my normal kinds of videos like this, but I really want to dig back into making really uh, good, helpful tutorials for you. So let me know if there's anything specific that you need help with. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.